Yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. This is the Acquia Podcast. Today, I'm going to be having a conversation with Paul Wander from Invica. Invica is the parent company of Sensio Labs UK. Invica has a growing Drupal business and Drupal practice. And Sensio Labs UK, of course, is the UK division of Sensio Labs, the um, parent organization that looks after the interests of the Symphony 2 platform, uh, many components of which are being integrated into Drupal 8. Sensiolabs.co.uk was one of the very first Drupal 8 websites online. When did, when did you, or you and your crew get the idea to relaunch the website on Drupal 8? So the Drupal 8, um, we decided one day in the pub <laughs> that it would be a good idea. Um, no, look, we, we're at the, I, in the Invica group now, there are about 100 software engineers or 100 people involved in the delivery of, uh, of software. Uh, and a good number of those are Drupal experts. And because we are contributing to the project, uh, because we are contributing to Drupal, and because we want to be uh, really leading what's going on with Drupal customization, uh, serious Drupal projects, we, we felt that we had to be involved and know what was going on with Drupal 8. What better way is there than to eat your own dog food? So we decided to um, be bold, actually, and stick a site out there in Drupal 8, um, which was, as you say, one of the very first uh, Drupal 8 sites. So we, we thought we'd give it a spin. You know, we took an early prototype not an early prototype, we took an early uh, release of, I think it was an alpha release actually of Drupal 8, uh, and we stuck a sign out there. Hey, it worked, uh, it works. Uh, it's helped to also improve the quality of the overall software because there's some things in there that we, we fed back to the community. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a bit of, it was more than a bit of fun. It was, it was a professional bit of fun for us to play with Drupal 8 and see uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and to start to grip start to get to grips with the software itself. I, I have an inkling that you were actually even pre-alpha in your launch, but I would have to go and look exactly uh, to figure that out. And it's not so very important, actually. Um, it's great. And thank you for the contributions to the platform. Obviously, that makes a real difference to all of us using Drupal in the end. Did the D8 development experience meet your expectations? Um, yes, uh, I, I would say it did. That number one, we had a plan that in a few weeks we wanted to uh, kick out this site, and we did. Uh, the site is out there and live, and it's stable, so there's no issue with that whatsoever. Talk about Drupal 8 as a platform for continuous innovation. Uh, what really impresses large companies uh, is software that can keep, to keep, keep pace with a modern development. And what, what often happens is that with pieces of, certainly with licensed software, something will come along, like let's say mobile, and we all know that we need mobile websites these days. And that typically starts as a bolt-on to a, a mon monolithic piece of software, and it never, never really gets integrated. The good thing with versioning, and certainly with open source software, it gives you a chance to tear down the old version, decide what has to be at the core and the foundation level, uh, and build it in from the ground up again. So we are, we were very impressed, and our clients that we're showing it to are, are impressed, that for example, in Drupal 8, all of the theming and the templates are responsive, out of the box. That, that, that's really more than useful. That saves a lot of aggravation, time, energy, and money uh, from companies. And even the administration portion uh, is responsive, uh, which is quite impressive and nice to see. But yeah, I think the main thing is that we, we see that when it comes to this 
I don't want to make a big, big deal out of it, but it's omni-channel engagement. You know, letting your customers interact with you in the way that they want to, not in the way that you force them to, and having a joined-up view of that. So if you call the call center uh, and then you go online and uh, and try and get some further customer service, the both things should be in the same place. That's what Drupal 8 is going to allow companies to take advantage of. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken now, about 70% of Drupal out there is Drupal 7. Um, and then the curve goes down through Drupal 6. There's even Drupal 5 stuff out there, I think, very small amounts. But we would, because most people now are at Drupal 7, uh, we would expect to see that over the next probably three years, uh, it will have a transformation, another transition, and that the majority of those on Drupal 7 will, will, will want to be on Drupal 8 for the new features. For me, the, the, use of, uh, the, the clever use of the framework and components uh, and the rewriting of much of the core of Drupal 8 allows developers amazing flexibility whilst preserving the maintainability of the application. Now, to business people, that sounds like, well, probably they didn't even, let's say, didn't even understand what that means, what a maintainable ap application means. What that translates to in the business is that their time to market for new features and the quality of those new features as they are produced is improved dramatically. What do businesses want to do? We're in, this social, we're in the, uh, the internet age. A new thing will come along tomorrow, let's say the next Twitter. They want to see if it works for their business. Drupal 8 will allow them, uh, the way it's componentized and it's been structured, will allow them to adopt and take advantage and try things out in a small way. If it works for them, they may want to invest more. But it allows them to try it out in a small way without breaking the foundation of their content management um, and their, their asset management. Beyond responsive web design out of the box, what are some other technical elements in Drupal 8 that businesses, that the enterprise would find important? I think there's a couple of things in, the, uh, in Drupal 8 which businesses will find exciting. The low barrier to entry is important uh, for the development community into Drupal. It means that existing teams in enterprises can get to grips swiftly with Drupal. It's predicated on industry accepted framework components, standards, etc., uh, which will not be alien to these people. Uh, and they can start to take advantage of pieces of Drupal quickly. This will enable them to be heroes in the eyes of the business who are snapping their fingers, demanding these bits of application. And it, if developers want to, they can now start to take it Drupal, learn it quite quickly, and kick stuff out there into production. Further to that, the, maintain, the extensibility, the way that you can customize Drupal, um, and the maintain, maintainability of the applications that you deliver uh, means that the business can have confidence. This, this is not just a prototyping thing that you'll try it and throw it away. So I think the Drupal, um, of course, it will continue to grow and evolve and add new features, but it serves so many of the content requirements uh, of a business nowadays that uh, I, I would encourage, e again, developers who haven't been involved with Drupal, take it, have a look at it, um, and you can, there are lots and lots of agencies out there and partners through the Acquia partner program you can go and find in your, close to where you, uh, in your territory or close to where you work. Um, you will find lots of partners out there who will have the skills to augment your team uh, or to actually affect the knowledge transfer into your team so you can take advantage of the features of Drupal. How does Drupal's integration of components from the Symphony 2 framework open up new markets for you as Invica and as Sensio Labs UK? Yeah, so we see that the, uh, first of all, it's, it's like a, a, the coming together of two very large communities. Uh, I haven't got the numbers to hand, but they are two of the largest open source development communities will be around Drupal uh, and Symphony itself. And so therefore, I think it made good sense to uh, not merge the communities, but for one, uh, for both to have reciprocal uh, ties to each other. Uh, for us as a business, Essentia Labs, we're really looking, we are, we're seeing it already that organizations, agencies, uh, and end users of Drupal are, re 
requiring, um, if they are Drupal implementers, more from the styling side, it'll have no impact whatsoever. But for those organizations who want to be customizing their Drupal modules and components, we see Sensio Labs already being asked to help to train and transfer the knowledge into the teams so that they can perform uh, customization using the correct approach, which will be predicated on Symfony components. In both communities, getting excited about the integration possibilities, for example, taking a highly complex project and using Drupal for what it's very good at, which is managing content, managing access to content and functionality, and marrying that with some things that <clears throat> might be better done using uh, a pure Symfony framework application. I think that's, that uh, there's all sorts of new ways that we're going to be able to put together our componentized, you know, open source Lego bricks into, into new things that maybe, you know, a lot of us haven't even thought of yet. I'm, I'm really excited to see what the next year or two is going to bring on, on projects. The other thing I just wanted to uh, mention is that the reason that Drupal is, is, is uh, important in the world uh, of open source development is that as an astonishing number of web pages that are flying about uh, in the ether are actually delivered from Drupal. It's, uh, it sounds a small number, but it's 2% of all internet traffic, uh, page traffic, are Drupal generated pages. This is a mighty big number. Um, so we see Drupal uh, and, and Drupal is used, if you look at the usage of it, it's used, um, the curve is that for more sites with high traffic, they are the ones who are adopting Drupal. So we think the, 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 the Acquia Drupal partnership, if you like, a, a ability to offer that commercialized support and uh, give these enterprises some uh, certainty uh, around that product is vital. One thing it might be worth noting as well is that we're seeing uh, in the public sector, at least in the UK, um, a requirement for open source software. And uh, I can just tell you that often in the mind of the uh, procurement uh, teams who are looking at building some serious local and national government level uh, platforms, open source equals Drupal. Um, now, uh, actually, in terms of the project itself, Drupal will probably form between 25 and 40 percent of the cost of the delivery of that project uh, because you need all the other things around it, the um, obviously getting the requirements right up front, the support afterwards, and lots of theming and styling. Um, but often we're seeing, we're, we're being specifically asked that if you are delivering or um, if you're promoting the use of open source technology in the minds of the officials who are doing the procurement, that means Drupal. Thank you so much, Paul Wander from Invica and Sensio Labs UK for taking the time to talk with me today about Symfony, about Drupal 8, about enterprise business and uh, how open source software intersects with that. Um, I've had a lot of fun talking with you today, Paul. I hope we can do this again sometime. Thanks, Jan, for having me. We uh, at uh, Sensio and Invica, we look forward to many more successful uh, Drupal projects and working with you guys at Acquia. Thank you. Hey, thanks a lot. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time for this. Thanks, Jan. All the best. Take care, man.